Here's the message from the prophet Ezekiel. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you've transgressed. Make you a new heart, a new spirit. For why would you die, O house of Israel? Well, I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. Folks, God knows the pain and sorrow of the death of the innocent. Who could be more innocent than his own son? Who is more innocent? And God laid the world's sins, the sins of the whole world, on the back of his own son and let wicked men kill him. So don't tell me that he's not a feeling God, that he doesn't feel pain. He said, I take no pleasure in this. And I'll tell you why God bottles tears, because they're his own tears he's retrieving. He weeps through those Oh, who are his beloved children? Every tear you shed as a believer in Jesus, the lover of Christ, those are the tears of God. Jesus is still man and he weeps and he weeps through his children. It's the only evidence he can give. And I tell you now, Jesus has been weeping. God pities, he weeps, but his justice and his righteousness force him to restrain his pity and carry out righteous judgments as a last resort. His justice demands, His justice demands that He lay these sins on His Son and that an innocent Son of God would die. Oh yeah, so many innocent people have died. Not that there was personal judgment on them, many righteous died. But God's trying to save a nation. Now what's going to happen if this nation misses the message and we don't turn wholly back to the Lord because the window of opportunity is very short now? What's going to happen if abortion continues and we end up killing born babies for research purposes? If we continue rubbing the precious name of Jesus out of our American history? That's what they're trying to do now. All the school books are being rewritten. The majority of school books are being written. Removing God's name from American history. Now. What happens if we rebuild bigger and better? Only to enrich ourselves even more. And what's going to happen if we don't trust God now instead of trusting our armed might? Let me answer that question out of my own, not out of my own heart, not out of speculation, but the word of God. Isaiah clearly tells us what follows, rejects of his call to repentance and a turning to pride and boasting of greatness. Look at verse 18, chapter 9. The Bible says there'll be devouring flowers mining to the, mounting to the heavens, darkness over the land. National disunity, a stricken economy, every man out for himself to survive. Now listen to this scripture, for wickedness burneth as the fire. It shall devour the briars and thorns and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest. They shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. The whole land next through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened. It will be darkened by... Smoke of fires, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. It will be every man for himself. He shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry. God's going to touch the economy. They shall eat on the left hand. No, he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. That means it, he's going to protect his little world, and God help you if you try to get near the flesh of his own arm. Let me read to you a message, I, just a note, a message I delivered from this pulpit. It was September 7th, 1992. It's entitled, A Pre Prophetic Warning to New York City. Some of you were here, perhaps, at that time, 1992. And let me read this. This, this was from this pulpit. 
Right now, I believe God is speaking a warning to New York City. And I wrestled with his severe word as I prepared this message. And I prayed, Lord, is this really going to happen? Again and again, I heard the still small voice preach it and warn the people. Those who want the truth will receive it. Dear Saint, this warning is not meant to scare you. It's meant only for you to take to the Lord and pray. This is what I believe the Lord has shown me. 30 days of chastisement will fall in New York City, such as the world has never seen. God's going to let down the walls. Unimaginable violence, looting. A thousand fires will be burning at the same time throughout the city and its boroughs. Times Square will be ablaze and the flames that ascend into the heaven will be seen for miles. Fire trucks will not be able to handle it all. Trains and buses will be shut down. Billions of dollars will be lost. Broadway shows will stop completely. It will cause businesses to flee the city in an unstoppable hemorrhage. The violence will be ferocious. It will shock the whole world. Our streets will be lined, not with just National Guard, but the militia. Los Angeles fires will be confined. Or Los Angeles fires were confined to a few sections of the city, but New York will be ablaze in its boroughs. Such things are expected in third world countries, but not in a civilized nation like the United States. Yet in not too long a time afterward, New York City will go bankrupt. The city's queen city cast into the dirt. A city of poverty. When will all this happen, you ask? All I can say is I believe I will be here when it happens. When it happens, no matter where we are, in our apartment, on the job, God's people are not to panic or fear. And I've been asked so many calls in our Texas office. Brother Dave, the website's covering this all of the United States. Is this what you saw? And my answer is no, it's not. Not at all. Because what I see is far more, far more severe. The heartland won't be spared. Because you see, if we turn away from God now, if we don't have voices rising, then this is what happened to Israel. The whole nation came under economic collapse. I don't like to hear this. Folks, we didn't want to hear it then. And it's happened. And now we weep. You say, well, can any of this be avoided? Absolutely yes. Yes. If this president proves to be a Josiah, a man who sought the Lord with all his heart, according to God's pattern or the tracks of the Holy Spirit, we may be given a reprieve for as long as we have a godly man who not turns to the right or to the left, but completely trembles at the word of God. Second Kings, verse chapter 22, if you will, please. Now, uh, Josiah has just read the word of the Lord. They've read it to him. And there are prophecy, prophecies of judgment upon the nation because of sin. And he sends representatives to hold to the prophetess. And she gives this message and sends it to Josiah. And this is the message. This is the message. I believe God wants to send to a Christian president. And listen to it. And she said to them, Thus saith the Lord of Israel, Tell the man that sent you, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. Because they've forsaken me and have burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king or to the president, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which you have heard, Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place, and against the habitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse. And thou hast rent thy clothes, and you have wept before me, and I have heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore, and here's our hope, 
Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and that I shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And he brought the king word again. God said, as long as you're in power, as long as you weep before me, as long as you don't turn the right or the left, as long as you tremble at my word, you will not see what is coming. It will not come under your rule. It will not come in your time. My prayer is that we would pray that desperately and even this morning before we close the service to call this church to pray that God give us, a, that God give the spirit of Josiah in the White House. Our Attorney General Ashcroft is a Pentecostal believer full of the Holy Spirit. There are prayer meetings every day in the White House. We need to plead with God that the spirit of Josiah the spirit, the same spirit that rested on him. Not, folks, not that we should be afraid of what is coming, but to give us some time to evangelize because the, there is, seems to be a visitation of the Holy Spirit that is, is, is running in parallel with these judgments. There seems to be God speaking all over the land. Churches in Dallas, churches in Denver are being packed with people. And this was happening even before it. And prayer meetings were called. There, 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 there were, and these are the Christians. These are the believers that are coming together. There's, there's a temporary pull and call among those who are not believers. But folks, this is a hope. And here's what the prophet Zechariah said. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord, and I will turn to you. I will turn to you. The most profound word of all with this, I'm going to close. Go to Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, please. And with this, I close. Could you stand with me while we read this? Then the word of the Lord came to me. See, the Lord sends his word saying, O house of Israel, can I... Cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, pull down, and destroy it? If that nation against whom I pronounced turn from their evil, what does it say? I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at one instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that if it obey not my voice, and if, you miss, if we miss the message, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. And God said, if you'll just turn. I can't, we can't reach the world from this pulpit. See, with this I'm closing. Yes, I pray that the nation repent. But my most intense prayer is for my own heart. Lord, let me be wholly turned to you. Let me have a repentant heart. And let me judge my sins that I not be judged before the throne. I'm not looking at somebody else. Folks, you can't find anywhere in this particular thing where God blamed uh, uh, sinners. He didn't blame homosexuals. He didn't blame those. He said it's because of your pride and your cry of greatness. Because in your troubled times and in your grief, you didn't turn to me with all your heart. You didn't come against your sins, but you turned to your own strength and you turned because you were wounded in pride. Your pride rose up. God says, if you will turn to me with all your heart, I'll repent of what I had in plan for you. You can't repent for the rest of New York. We can repent for ourselves. And our repentance this morning can rise to high heaven and touch the throne of God. Folks.
Listen to me, please. We want to re remember in prayer our president, President Bush, when he was a candidate, one of his first speeches was given at one of our Teen Shams, our Teen Shams Center in Lubbock. We have a copy of it. And he said, I was alcoholic. And Jesus saved me not only from alcoholism, but from sin. And I've given my heart to Jesus Christ. Now, folks, we're to pray for our leaders, even if they were evil. How much more for those that have been placed in power at such a strategic time? Would everybody in this building, please, we're going to pray for the president first, and then you may not agree with his politics, but folks, this is time. You're a Christian. Forget politics right now. And let's lay hold of God. I want... I want to lead you in this prayer, and I want everyone in this house, everyone in the annex, and all the overflow rooms. Folks, there are, uh, there are thousands here in all of our various auditoriums, and I know, I know right now that God will hear our cry. Would you lift your voice? I don't want to be the only one praying. Father, we, no, no, you pray yourself, Lord. I, I pray that you come now in a special way and sweep over this congregation. Lord. We tremble not at the disaster. We tremble at the word of God. We tremble, O oh God. We want to hear your message. We want to hear your voice in this. This nation must repent. God, this nation must turn back to you. And we have such little time left. God, I pray that you give President Bush mercy, grace, wisdom. Oh God. Continue to drive him to his knees. Josiah had a tender heart. Give him a tender heart toward you. God, don't let the counselors lead him to the right or to the left. Let him get his counsel from you, Lord. That still small voice. God, we weep for our nation. But, oh, God, we feel your tears. We have your tears, Lord, for the innocent. We have your tears for those who have died. Your tears over having to judge for sin. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, we repent before you. I repent. We all repent of our sins before you, Lord. We have neglected you. We have taken the things of God lightly. We have not been diligent, Lord. We've wasted our time in front of TV sets. Lord, we have turned aside in boredom. We've neglected you days without number. My God, forgive us in our churches. Forgive our pastors. Forgive me. Forgive all of us, oh Lord, for not warning the people. For not being in touch and hearing and knowing the voice of God. Not hearing the prophetic word of the Lord. Oh God, have mercy on this nation. Have mercy, oh God, have mercy. My Lord, have mercy upon us. God, we pray for the Christians in leadership. We pray for Ashcroft. We pray for the Attorney General, Lord. They have mocked him. They've ridiculed him. Now, Lord, give him a voice in the land. Give him a voice in the land, we pray. God, touch him. Put your arms around him and direct him and guide him. Oh, God. You want to have mercy on this nation? You want us to turn to you so that you can bring back your favor and blessing and protection. Oh God, in Jesus' name, spare your people. Protect your people in these hard times. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the holy name of Jesus. Bless the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, you have everything under control. You know what you're doing. You know what's happening. Lord Jesus, you'll hold your church. You'll hold your people. And you have, you have purpose to protect your people in these last days. You will protect, oh God, and you will give us your mind and your will. We will hear a word from heaven. We will know it's from you and from your throne. We will receive it with joy and gladness and pain and sorrow. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord.